Okay, so needle felting is basically the process of um, interlocking all the fibers of wool. So wool has little um, scales all along it, just like our hair does. Any um, animal hair has that. And you can felt any animal hair. Um, I've had people bring dog fur to um, some of our classes and they've used that for felting. So what we do when we're needle felting is you're using a barbed needle to, um, to poke in and out of our wool. So we have like wool, loose wool batting or roving, and you could use um, uh, wool fabric as well. But you use a needle and you poke in and out of the fibers. And every time that little barbs all along the needle go in, they pull fibers forward and back. And, and by doing that, by basically agitating the wool, you end up locking all of those wool fibers together so that they won't pull apart. So then they're felted. The same process happens when you're felting wool fabric, except when we do that, we're wet felting it. So you're putting it in hot water with a little bit of detergent. So that chemical detergent helps to open up the fibers and make them more receptive to moving. And then when you put it in the hot water, that opens them up even more. The washing machine agitates it, causing all of the little fibers to um, adhere to each other. And then when you, you rinse it in cold, so that makes it shrink. Then you put it in hot water or in a hot dryer and that makes it um, felt up even more. Oh, somebody's got their their speaker on. If you could take that off, that'd be great. So when we're when you're wet felting, that's the way you do it. You can also wet felt by hand with hot water and dish and dish detergent and um, just rubbing the felt fiber or the uh, wool fibers in between your hands, that will do it as well. But today we're gonna to be talking about needle felting. So the needles that we use look like this. And I'm hoping you can see, if I put my hand up behind it maybe, it's a very fine needle. There it is, very fine needle. And it has little barbs all along the, um, the shaft of the needle. So we're using that in our dominant hand and we're just poking in and out of, of wool fibers. So I just wanted to show you a few different samples of projects I've made using um, wool felting, needle felting. Most of the projects I've done have been uh, three-dimensional. So a lot of little animals. So this is a little squirrel. He was, or I guess a chipmunk or a squirrel, I'm not sure. Um, but he was made quite a few years ago when my youngest son was about 12. He really loved doing needle felting. Um, the, the needles are really sharp, but if you're careful, uh, kids can do it too. Um, these are our dearly beloved dogs, dearly, dearly departed dogs. So this, this is Willow, our Springer Spaniel, and this was Pugsley, our Jack Russell. So I made little replicas of them while they were still around. Um, there's a little chicken. You can see his little beak and everything. This bird was actually felted on top of an, a um, styrofoam egg. So you can use uh, wool on the inside of your little 3D animals, or you can use other substances. So you're felting the, the roving onto the ball. You're not really felting it to the ball. What you're basically doing is felting the wool around the ball. It's still, you could move that ball around on the inside, but all of the wool that's around it is felted together. So unless you cut that, you wouldn't be able to get the ball out. But it, it's an economical way to make larger three-dimensional objects because you're not using a whole bunch of wool to fill in the inside of your little creature or whatever you're making. This little snowman was a sample, he was what we made in class a couple of times when we had our studio and uh, we were doing workshops. So we did needle felting and um, everybody made a little snowman. The last time we did the needle felting class, I had everyone bring a picture of an animal that they wanted to do. So there were a lot of dogs, somebody had a pet goat, there was a cardinal, there was a whole bunch of different animals, but it was pretty fun. Then you can also do two-dimensional felting. So this is a little wall hanging I made. 
And all of these circles and the stems were all made with wool yarn. So it doesn't have to be loose roving that you felt with. You can felt with yarn as well. And it's it's nice to use yarn because it gives because it's thin, it gives you a really definite shape when you're felting with it. So for the circular shapes, I just started in the middle, started felting, and then kept going around and around in circles, keep felting as I go, okay? And those are all stuck down. They are not going to come off unless I got some scissors and, and went to it. These are just a few samples of some postcards that I made. So this one, the background is all felted, and then there are findings um, and beads sewn onto it. This one was a, a felted wool fabric on the back, and then this is just like a novelty yarn that I felted onto it. This one is actually a felted wool fabric, felted to wool fabric. Now you can see on, especially on the house, that some of the fibers have kind of shredded on the side. Um, you could trim those off with a scissors or something, um, but it does, it is kind of disintegrating the yarn that, you're, that you are felting onto the other yarn, or it's disintegrating the fabric that you're felting as you're going. So it can sometimes get sort of that look, but sometimes that's the look you wanna have. This one's a little landscape. So that was done fully with wool roving on top of a wool fabric background. And then this one's kind of fun. So it was done all with yarn, some buttons in the middle of the flowers, and it was done all on wool fabric. And then this one is a bag that's in process. I haven't finished it yet. And you can see this is what the fabric looks like on the inside. So every time you felt in with the needle, it pushes some of the some of that fiber through. So you can see here that that's what's holding the the wool yarn to the background. It's all these fibers that have been pushed through and have locked in in with the other fibers. So sometimes you will end up pulling some fibers up as well. So if you're if you have <clears throat> excuse me if you're making a three-dimensional <coughs> object and you've got a different color <clears throat> excuse me a different color um, wool on the inside and you're felting a different uh, like a darker color or something to the outside sometimes that inside wool will come out and you'll get little specks of it so it's just the more you felt it the more the, the fibers are going to move either forward or back and that's what the outside of that bag looks like. <coughs> okay, so I'm gonna do a little demo for you. Get rid of all of these to begin with. <clears throat> okay, so when you're felting, you wanna have your felting needles. So I showed you one of those. <coughs> Uh oh, this is the way it's going to go, I think. <laughs> so it come, they come in different sizes. And just like um, fabric, or just like thread, the, the bigger the needle, the bigger the number, the finer the needle. So here is a, these are a selection of different needles that we have. So this is the package that has four different sizes. <coughs> oh, sorry. Now, the, the smaller number <clears throat> so 36 gauge which is this one here is the coarsest of the needles that one is the one that you're going to start with so when you start um, working away and you've got all your loose fibers and you want to get it done quickly <clears throat> getting all of those together and that's the one you use because it's the thickest number thickest needle it's also the 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 one that's the the hardest to break, I'm trying to say. So the finer the needle, the easier they are to break. And when I teach needle felting, everybody, at least one person, at least everybody, everybody, I'm trying to say, everybody breaks at least one needle. So it's, it's you just have to remember when you're going in, you come straight back out. You don't go in and then kind of pull up or back because that's gonna bend the needle and it's gonna break right inside of your project. 
So you always start with the, with the lowest number, which is the coarsest needle, and then work your way up. So the 38 gauge is for medium felting. Um, you use that to attach one item to another. So if you've got an arm and a, and a body, then you want to attach those together. That's what you would use. The 40 gauge <clears throat> is an extra fine needle and it is for doing details. So if you have little tiny um, eyes or a mouth or little tiny details that you want to put on your, on your needle felted project, that's the one you would do, use. It's the finest needle. It's also the easiest to break. So you have to be really careful when you're working on it. And then the 38 star is the one <coughs> that they say is excellent for felting large areas. So if you were doing a landscape or something that you had a, lar a large area that you wanted to do, um, that's the one that you would use for that. So we have these needles on our website and we have a code for Quilt Canada for 25% off all needle felting supplies. I have to remember to say that. Um, so we have the, the combo packs and then we have all the separate uh, numbers in with four packs of those. So you can see those on our website. So you've got your needle, you've got some roving or some some fleece so that's what this is so this is a, a pink kind of a modely color fleece um, I'm just gonna tip you guys down so that you can see my counter <coughs> just gonna make sure that we can still see everything with this video okay <coughs> oh I'm sorry okay so you need to have some type of a work surface. So this is a foam block. <coughs> <coughs> I'm just going to grab a, a little drink of water. I'll be right back. <clears throat> okay, hopefully that will help. So you have to have some type of a surface to felt on because when you're using this sharp little needle, you don't want to be um, uh, hitting it on your table or <clears throat> God forbid hitting it in your finger. So this little work surface just helps you to lay your roving or your fleece onto it. And then you can actually needle right through the fleece and into your little um, base. So we have, um, the Bosal needle felting bases on our website. So they're actually a little bit bigger than the one that I'm using. So it, that's kind of nice. The, the larger the surface, the larger <clears throat> a piece you can work on without get, having to move it around. So they are uh, six by nine and then two inches thick. So there's no way that you're gonna get through that and hit your table. <clears throat> so if you're starting with a like three dimensional object, you take a piece of fleece and kind of roll it in your hand to make, well, if you're doing, it depends on what you're making. So if you were making like a little animal, so let's say I was gonna make a little pig out of this, then I would kind of make a sort of a sausage shape to start with. Okay, so you can tuck in the sides and then roll. And the tighter you roll it, the easier it's gonna be for your felting, okay? So there's my little sausage shape pink fleece. So if I didn't, if I let go of it, it's all going to open up, right? So I'm going to show you what happens after I've just needled it a couple times. <clears throat> okay. So when you're needling, best, best practice is to have it on the base and away from your finger. So you're, you need to hold it. Um, so you can just hold it off to the side and then you just take your needle and just poke into it right along that edge that was folded over. So see, now that I've done just a few little jabs into it it's already holding its shape okay so if you want to make it narrower like if it was too fat this way then you just poke into it and go all the way around and every time you poke it gets smaller and smaller because those fibers are being interlocked more and more so you can see that it's getting a little bit smaller as I go here <clears throat> Okay, and it's getting more dense and it's harder. So before it was pretty squishy, but now it's getting a little bit harder. 
Now, if I wanted to make it a little bit shorter this way, then I poke this direction and poke in from the end. And you can see it's getting smaller already. <clears throat> okay, and then you can do the same thing. So you have to make sure that you're keeping your hands out of the direction of your needle. Okay. That isn't quite the shape I want, but we'll just go with it for right now. Okay, so now it's a little bit stiffer and a little bit denser than it was to start with, but it's definitely going to hold that shape. Now, if I wanted to add a head to my little sheep, I could take a little ball and sort of roll it in my hand and get it kind of secured that way. Now, the smaller the piece that you're felting, the more difficult it is to hold on to it and keep your fingers out of the way. So you can see you can kind of lift it up with the needle and do it that way. Oops. <clears throat> Okay, so when you're making anything that you want to attach to the body of your creature or look, there's a little piece of um, straw in my roving, that's okay. So as I was saying, um, when you want to attach something to another section of your body, so you want to leave some of your fibers fairly loose. So I would normally um, make this much smoother and rounder. And the, the more you needle into it, the smoother it's going to get. But I want to show you um, how to attach the head. So you have some fibers that are sort of loose. And you're going to put this on to the body of your creature. And you're going to hold it. And just needle all the way around where those fibers are. Hope you can see what I'm doing. And right around to the front and then you can also needle up from the body into the head and then if you wanted to find the neck more then you can needle into it a bit more and make it a bit narrower There, so now it's got a head. Doesn't look like too much right yet, but <laughs> once I put some legs and things on it, it'll definitely look like something. But that's how you build an animal or some type of a three-dimensional creature. So you could build fairies or a little mushroom or something like that, but you would do the same thing. You would make, like if you're making a mushroom, you would make the cap of the mushroom and then you would make the bot, the, the stalk of the mushroom and you would attach that underneath along the, the middle part. And you just keep building. And if you wanna add different um, features to it, like let's say we wanna make him a, we're gonna make him a blue polka dotted, whatever he is. So I've got a little tiny piece of fleece here and I'm gonna just put that on there. Can you see that? And then I'm just going to needle into it a little tiny bit. I don't want to, I want to needle sort of around the edge so it keeps its defined edge and then also into the middle so it holds it in place. So there's one little polka dot on our little pink creature, whatever he is. <laughs> So the other thing you can make are little flowers and, and things like that. And these are sort of an easy way to, um, to use the felt. So we're going to basically make a flat, uh, <clears throat> a flat um, shape on here. So I've got the, the roving on there and I'm going to switch to this needle. So this is the clover punch needle and it actually has five one of them is broken one of my students broke it <laughs> so i can replace that but i just haven't um so it normally has five needles inside hope you can see that and the little sec the little plastic piece comes out and protects them when it's not being used but 
when you use this, your felting goes five times faster. So you can see with just a few jabs in, I've already got a piece that's fairly flat and felted. And the same thing, you can felt in from the edges. So I'm going in on an angle, but coming straight out so I'm not breaking them. So you go in and come straight out. And then you just keep flipping it over because you'll see it's fuzzy on this side. And that's because the needle has pushed the fibers through. So the more you've, you've felt from one side and another, you're going to smooth that out. Okay, now if I was gonna make a flower petal, probably want, I'm gonna use a small one for this. So I'm just gonna make, bring the edges in a little bit so they're not quite so thin on the edges. And I'm gonna go in there a little bit more. And you can see it's getting smaller and smaller as I felt it. Oh, I'm gonna get this out of the way. Well, it's got more of a petal shape already. So this is my petal shape. So this would be the way it would be in the flower with this part out. Now I want to give it some dimension. So I'm going to kind of pinch it here. I'm going to pinch it that way and, and I'll see if I can show you. And just kind of go through it from one side to the other. See, it's got more of a dimension to it instead of just flat so if I what I would do is make more petals like that and then you can even give it more dimension in through here like if you wanted to um, give it like a like veins in the flower petal then you could do that and just um, keep felting it until it looks like you want it to look. And if it, if you felted it so much that it's shrunk too much, then just add more of that roving onto it. And you just keep building it until it's the shape and the size you want. If, you, if it really looks wrong, just cut it. You can cut it with scissors and then felt other stuff over top of it. It's very forgiving. Um, it's You can't really pull it out. Once you've done it, you can't really pull it out. So it is um, kind of a neat thing to be able to do and you can make a brooch or like lifelike um, flowers or something out of it um, but it is really quite a neat um, technique to know so the little landscapes or actually I'm going to show you the felting the yarn because it's one of my favorite ways of felting so basically you start I'm going to make a little flower out of this one so I've got my wool yarn and it has to have mostly wool content. If it doesn't have wool, if it's acrylic or something like that, it's not going to felt because it doesn't have all the little, um, little scales along the fibers like the wool does. So I'm just going to make like a little petal shape. I'm going to use this one. I'm going to hold it here. I'll show you what the back looks like. There's the back. You can see all the little fibers are poking through, but it's the back. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so now I'm going to do my next little flower petal. And you can see using the one needle is slower than using the five needle, but depending on what you're doing, you can use either one. And you can also felt onto other fibers. Like I've seen beautiful um, scarves made on silk. Uh, <clears throat> and the silk um, doesn't really get felted to the wool, but the wool gets felted around the silk fibers. So it, um, it will hold its shape on there. And then we'll do our last little flower petal. And I'll cut that off. So there, it's 
pretty easy to create shapes using the yarn on top of the wool. Now it's quite, it's not felted quite as much as it should be. I could still pull that off if I wanted to. I would go back and, and felt it a bit more, but I just wanted to show you how you can get those, um, the yarn to stay on there. And then if you wanna add some details with some roving, you can easily do that as well. So I've got a little piece of roving in the middle here. I'm gonna add a little yellow center to the middle of my flower. And you can leave that as dimensional as you want. So if you want it to stick up a bit, so it looks a bit 3D, you can, or you can felt it down flat. So right now it's quite dimensional. You can see it's sticking up. Um, but if I wanted to, I could just use the other needle felting tool, give it a few pokes, and now it's much flatter than it was. So that's the same idea if you were doing like a landscape you would just lay out, let's say I'm doing the sky on my landscape. <clears throat> you can lay out the fibers as thin or as thick as you want. And then you just go and adhere them to the background using the felting needles. So there it is stuck on. And you can see, if you go online and look up needle felted landscapes or needle felting on Pinterest, you'll see all sorts of different examples of amazing needle felted works. So I just want to, now that I've shown you the basics of it, I'm just going to show you um, some of the other products we have. So I showed you the needles. I showed you the needle felting tool from Clover. So we have that. We also have the base, the Bosol base. And then we've got um, a few different packets of um, wool roving. So this is 100% wool, two ounces total. And this one has eight different colors. So there's gray. This one's like the furry. This one is, no. One of them is a furry friends grouping. I can't remember which one. Might be this one. No, so that's green. So this one's like a neutrals. This one's like the furry friends. So if you wanted to make animals, it's got your grays and browns and creams and black. This one's got some greens and golds, a light blue. So we've got those different packages with the eights. And then if you have specific colors that you want to use, if you want to make pumpkins or something, we have individual colors. So this one's like a chocolate brown. This one's orange, it's called light pumpkin. Um, we have red, and then we have a few that have more than one color in them. So this one is called Fall Harvest. So it's got burgundy, purple, green, and orange. And then we have one that's called Jester. I wonder where that one is. Um, <clears throat> of course, I can't find it right now. But there's a nice cranberry red. And then we also have some books. So these are where a lot of people get their inspiration when they're doing projects. So this one is called Needle Felting for Beginners. Hope you can see that. So it's got all sorts of little animals in it. And it shows you right from the beginning how you start building it. So there you can see you start with this amount of a ball of blue wool and then you're going to do this you're going to do this and you keep working your way through and then after you've felted it enough then it's going to have this shape and then the next steps it will show you exactly how you process all the way through to making the animal that you're making so this one ends up as a little teddy bear i think you see him there um <clears throat> so we have that one that's a needle felting for beginners this one is the needle, just, this is the first book we carried, was needle felting. It's got um, beautiful animals in it as well. And um, some other things like toadstools and, and cupcakes and all these things. I wanted to show you, there's the rabbit. He almost looks like he's real. And then, um, I don't know if I can find him. Oh, there's the little fox. He looks like he just woke up out of the forest. And then this one is another Happy Wool Felting Animals. 
And this one's got lots of different um, birds and creatures in it as well. Look at this little kitten. He's adorable. So I hope you found that informative. And um, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and do that. I'm going to stop our video right now, our taping that I'm doing.